Hey, what's up, my summer loving friends? I'm so thrilled to be here today with all of you as we find out what it means to make waves. Why are we making waves? Well, one, it's summer. And two, because of this fact, what you do today can change the world around you. Sure, we're making waves with some fun activities this month, but we're also changing the world around us with waves of love and joy, goodness and peace. You see, when we put our faith in Jesus, we have God's Holy Spirit in our lives. And God's Spirit helps us speak, think and act in a way that'll make a difference for other people. You know, even a little wave can make a big difference, but we can make bigger waves when we all work together. Summer is the perfect time for a family vacation or some fun weekend getaways. Even if it's just a trip up north, you need some good road trip snacks to help pass the time. So I want you to tell me, what would you rather have, a salty snack versus a sweet snack, okay? Would you rather have flaming Hot Cheetos or a bag of M&Ms? How about Doritos or some Starburst? So raise your right hand if you're gonna go with a salty snack, and raise your left hand if you're going to go with a sweet snack. So here we go in three, two, one. Hmm. You're making me hungry. I'm gonna have to need to make a stop at Quick Trip on the way home for sure. Whatever your summer travel plans are, I hope you have a great time. So let's continue the fun this morning with this month's One Thing video. We'll see you next week. Hey, I'm Lawson and I just cheered really hard for my team. Go team, go! You got this! And my team did not have it, they lost. I unfollowed them. That doesn't really put me in a good story mood. But you are here and the story is here and I'm gonna tell it. See, my cousin knows this kid Isaiah and it's the opening day of the brand new swim park. Isaiah and his best friend Noah have been waiting forever. They've got their swim gear ready, all the gear. And as soon as they get to the pool, they're gonna jump right in off the high dive 20 times. And then take a trip to the snack bar for the world's most gigantic pop sickles. They're all ready to head out the door when it starts to rain and thunder and tornado lightning. They think maybe they can just wait it out. But mom checks the website. The water park has just been shut down for the day. At first, Isaiah and Noah want to pout like babies. But then Isaiah realizes, even though the water park is closed, he still has his best friend right here. And we've got a whole day free. Isaiah's got a choice to make. So he decides instead of diving into the pool, they can dive into a movie marathon. They gather a whole ocean of snacks, including some fishy ones, and they get ready for an epic day of all their favorite ocean themed movies. But maybe not the really scary one. And they choose to have an epic day after all. So kids, only use the sofa as a high dive with parental permission. And always remember this, that choosing joy is one way God can work inside of you to change the world around you. You know what? My team may have lost, but they're not losers, and I will refollow them just to brighten up their day. If they ever notice, I hope they do. Anyways, 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Psalm 55, 22 Cast your cares on the Lord And He will sustain you He will sustain you Cast your cares on the Lord And He will sustain you He will sustain you We'll never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall. No, he will never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall. No. Cast your cares on the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord And He will sustain you He will sustain you And He will never, never, never let the righteous fall Let the righteous fall No He will never, never, never let the righteous fall let the righteous fall, no. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain. On the Lord, He will sustain you. He will sustain you. He will never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous stay. No, said He will never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous stay. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 35. Near the town of Carmel lived a wealthy man named Nabal. Money, 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 always sunny, yeah, in a rich man's world, woo! The world was not so sunny for anyone who had to be near Nabal, like his servants. Our boss's picture is right here in the dictionary beside foolish person, see? Nabal was also terribly rude. You, bring me another leg of mutton. What's wrong with this one? It's touching those peas. But you asked for peas. I asked for tea, you blockhead. I shall dump these peas on your noggin. But unlike Nabal, Abigail, his wife, had a clear mind and a wise heart. She kept a close eye on her husband's estate and did her best to keep him from destroying their lives with his quick temper. Tell me. How was the flock this season? Have we lost any sheep to raiders? Not a one, my lady. But last season our sheep were attacked by robbers a dozen times. We've had protection. Protection? How? David and his men have been camping nearby. As long as they've stayed near our flocks, they've kept us and the sheep from any harm. Very good. I've heard some say David will be king in Saul's place. 
Has Nabal thanked David for his help? Give thanks, Nabal. <laughs> that was very funny, my lady. I'll consider the matter. Let me know if anything changes. The time for sheep shearing neared, and Nabal ordered a grand party to celebrate. Music, drink, mutton, mm, bread, cakes, raisins. Are you writing this down? Yes, sir. But no peas. No peas. As Nabal ordered the festivities, ten young men arrived to bring a message from David. That outlaw, what does he want? David says, may you live long and everything go well for you. <laughs> Only what I deserve. He says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. Please be kind to my men. Please give us anything you can find for us. <laughs> so, yes? Who is this David? Many servants are running away from their masters. Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? So, no? Vamos! And don't let the door hit you on the way out. David's men quickly returned to camp. They found David's anger could be just as hot as Nabal's. Each of you, put on your swords! In a short time, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. Word spread quickly. A servant raced to find Abigail. David sent messengers to Nabal and asked for a share of food, but Nabal was rude and shouted at them. You must do something or terrible trouble will come. Abigail didn't panic. Mm -mm. She took a deep breath. We have to get ahead of this. Take a list, please. On it. 200 loaves of bread, 200 bottles of wine, five sheep, a bushel of grain, 100 raisin cakes, uh, uh, 200 cakes of pressed figs. Any peas? No peas. Save those for Nabal. What else? Load it all on donkeys and start down the mountain. I'll follow. As David and his men quickly climbed the mountain, the caravan of donkeys and gifts made its way down the steep road. David's anger grew as he neared the mountain estate. He gripped his sword tightly. Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over this fellow's property, but he paid me back evil for good. I won't leave one of his men alive. What's this? Donkeys? And looks like food for a feast? At the back of the caravan, Abigail could see David as they met the donkeys. She took a deep breath hopped off the donkey and ran forward, throwing herself to the ground at David's feet. Pardon your servant, sir. Please don't pay any attention to that evil man, Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. But now the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. I've brought a gift for you and the men who follow you. Abigail dared to look up. David is watching her closely. The Lord your God will give you a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles. He'll appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you killed people without any reason. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Slowly, David nodded. He removed his hand from the hilt of his sword and reached down to help her up. Give praise to the Lord. He has sent you today to find me. You have shown a lot of good sense and kept me from using my own hands to get even. He has kept me from harming you. Prepare a feast for your men. You've earned every bit of it. Mm. Go home in peace. David accepted the gift and turned back instead of facing down Nabal. Abigail returned home to find her husband holding his giant party. Nabal! I've made peace. Peace? Ugh. Hate him. Woo Though David didn't kill him, Nabal soon met a dreadful end. Abigail and her entire household were saved because she chose to get creative and make peace. David was angry, right? He was so angry that he was ready to go to war with Nabal. 
So it's a good thing Abigail stepped in when she did. She made what could have been a really bad situation better by helping David see things in a different way. Abigail helped make peace. That's something you and I can do today. It's not always easy, but when you believe in Jesus, you have God's Holy Spirit to help you. God's Spirit can give you the wisdom to make waves by making peace. You can help others make peace. Say that with me. You can help others make peace. Sometimes you might feel a little bit like Nabal in the story. You might be the one who says or does something that makes someone mad, even if you didn't mean to. The best way to make peace in the situation is to admit you're wrong, say you're sorry, and make things right. Sometimes you might feel more like David. You might get mad at someone and want to get back at them. If you're in a situation like that, sometimes it helps to think about the consequences of your anger. What could happen if I lose my temper? Would I end up doing something I regret? And then there's Abigail, the peacemaker. When you're like her, it means you're standing outside of someone else's fight and maybe can see a way to make peace. Peacemakers can help others see their situations in different ways. They can stop arguments before they get way out of control. So making peace is a really great way to make waves in this world. Let's say this month's memory verse together. The fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. Galatians 5, through 23. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the story of Abigail that shows us how we can help others make peace. We want to be peacemakers, God, so please give us wisdom to help us know how to do that. Help us see how we can speak and act in a way that will calm down an argument. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next week.